24-7 programming on KLOK 1170 AM, serving the entire Bay Area and beyond. Visit us at www.pravasvani.com. to KLOK, San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, and the entire Bay Area, a principal broadcasting-owned radio station. You're listening to Bravasvani Radio, the largest Indian radio station in North America, with 24-7 on KLOK 1170 AM, serving the entire Bay Area and beyond. Visit us at www.pravasvani.com. Udiyam put Ahna the Karanga, Chaka Telugu Karekramani and Ginchina Pravasavani Radio, Manatelugu Slotalandri Kosam, Yiput Sarada, Sayin Kalanga, Rupu di Dukuni, Somavara Nundi Sukravar and Raku, Sayin from Enuvi Kantalamanchi Tundi di Kantalavaku, Prasar Motundi, Sarada Sarada Gasage, E. Sarada Sayin Kalando, Vinutna Karekraman and Pravasavani Radio, Mikan Distundi. आसवानी आपका अपना रेडियो आपके लिए ला रहा है बहुत ही दिलचस्प और मनोरंजन से भरपूर प्रोग्राम जिसमें शामिल है ज्ञान नेत्रम शुभांजलि मॉर्निंग मंत्र सुबह की उड़ान शाम का सफर और नए दिन से सरदा सायंकालम तथा कई ऐसे प्रोग्राम जो आपको खुश कर देंगे अगर आपको एडवरटाइज करना है या हमारे किसी भी प्रोग्राम को स्पॉन्सर करना है तो आप फोन कीजिए 855 टीवी रेडियो पर और Vision Eye Center provides medical, surgical, and routine vision care services. Our medical director, Dr. Shoba Tandon, MD, PhD, is a board-certified ophthalmologist who is trained at Stanford University. Dr. Tandon specializes in cataract surgery, LASIK surgery, eyelid surgery, pterygium surgery, and scar-free radio surgery to remove skin tags, warts, and moles. To set up a free consultation, call 1-877-636-8474 or visit us at www.neovisioneyecenter.com. You're listening to Pravasvani Radio, the largest Indian radio station in North America, with 24-7 programming on KLOK 1170 AM, serving the entire Bay Area and beyond. Visit us at www.pravasvani.com. These opinions and statements expressed in the following program reflect the views of program contributors and do not necessarily reflect the views of Pravasvani Radio, its management, or its sponsors. For questions and comments, please call us at 1-855-PV-RADIO, that is 1-855-787-2346, or visit us at www.pravasvani.com. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in on 1170 AM every Monday from noon to listen to the Sharpie Rally Law Show. The show is hosted by the well-known lawyer Sharpie Rally and will discuss about social and legal issues such as immigration, debt settlement, bankruptcy, family matters and other legal matters. For more information how to advertise or be on the show, check www.shhahpeerallylawshow.com or call us 510-742-5887 and ask for Anil Gandhi. Again, every Monday is from noon to 1 p.m. Views and opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Sharp Rada Law Show and its affiliates. The answers provided are for informational use only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the answers provided. You should contact an attorney to access your case before making a decision. Cases differ. Success one case does not necessarily mean that you should be successful in your case. No attorney client relationship is created unless an agreement is signed by both the attorney and the client. Call Sharp Rada Law Group on 510-742-5887 for any questions. 
Hello everybody, this is Shah Parali. We're going to have another special show today based on the, on the Tri-Valley situation. And um, we were, we're hoping to have some guests today. Hopefully we will get them, we will get them online. We're going to have Marnet uh, Federis, uh, hopefully, she, if we can reach her. Uh, we're trying to call her right now. And also Kavita Arora, who is going to come also a little bit later. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the situation and the, and the developments that has been happening and keep tuning in you can see us live online uh, on air on uh, ask us attorneys dot com ask us attorneys dot com the number to call the studio today is one eight five five seven seven two eight two seven eight one eight five five seven seven two eight two seven eight we're going to hopefully also have the testimonial of few peoples that are going to be to be on the um, who has been kind of affected directly as students about this unfortunate situations. Uh, just few updates that to, to tell you, uh, just before I reached the studio, uh, I saw a, a, a post that was giving a phone number actually and we post I posted it on our website on shahpirali.com, S-H-A-H-P-E-E-R-A-L-L-Y dot com and it's basically saying that um, there is now a hotline a hotline from ICE which is the Immigration Custom Enforcement Unit uh, regarding what we call the um, the tri situation and the number that they have posted is 415-844-5320 and they also give an email, an email called SFRHSI F R A U D at DHS dot gov at DHS dot gov. Okay, now a, a word of caution. Okay, you might want to call this number because you'll be tempted. You think that okay, this is a, a number that ICE is giving you, and you should be calling it and get the information. What I will advise you right now is something uh, which no, all lawyers will probably advise you to do. I will not advise you to call that number on your own. I repeat that. Don't call that number on your own. You know why? Because if you call that number on your own, from the experience on the few cases, that, not few cases, we got almost 300 calls since that thing has been happening. And the few people that got into trouble are those people who volunteered information in there. And I don't want you to, to just volunteer information. What I will advise, if you're represented by an attorney, go ahead, ask the attorney to call on your behalf. Remember, ask an attorney to call on your behalf or email on your behalf. The reason for that is the attorney will not volunteer any information and the attorney who knows immigration law will know where the points are important. I think we have, we have, uh, uh, we have a call already online. This is Shapur Ali, you're live on air. Hello? Okay, I think I lost the caller. Well, the number to call is 1-855-772-8278, 1-855-772-8278. And uh, we probably will have two guests in on this on this show. And we are just going to take a quick break, and then we will be back uh, after these messages. So don't go anywhere. You can watch us live online on askusattorneys.com, askusattorneys.com. This is a flash news that we got. They gave us a toll-free number, but again, I'm telling I'm cautioning everybody don't call that number directly personally go through your attorney so we'll take a break and we will be right back <laughs> Oh, 
This is Shah Pirali, we are live on air. Hello, Mr. Shah. Yes, sir. How are you? My brother, how are you? Oh, how are you doing, the DJ? Oh, man, I still miss you, my brother. <laughs> we miss you, we miss you too. And you know, there's, a, there's an important show today. We are talking about those raids that the immigration is doing on those poor uh, students from Tri Valley. You do a very good job. I love you. you know? Thank you, thank you, sir. I appreciate it, Tibetuji. We're always a very faithful listener, so keep telling okay. everybody. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Hello, this is Shapir Ali. Alive on air. I think we lost. Okay, so we are trying to still reach uh, Manet Federalist, and as you know, Manet is um, is a columnist for uh, for uh, Pleasant and Patch, uh, and she has been uh, one of the first person to break the news on the Tri Valley. And I spoke to her today, and she told me she never thought this was such a huge. Uh, um, such, such a huge thing that was happening and they are, they are pretty much a a small um, local newspaper and they, that that uh, news pretty much went all around the world especially in India and as you know I even gave a, a an interview to Times Now on Sitara TV and some other newspaper about this issue and I wanted to have Manet and she uh, you give if you give me a few minutes we are trying to call her so uh, we're going to have her also on the line and that call us uh, you can call us live it's a toll free number on 1855 you can also chat with me uh, we have two callers let me take the caller this is Shah Pirali you're live on air yeah hi uh, my name is Rohan hi Rohan how are you yeah hi actually uh, uh, I want to ask you uh, one, uh, one of my friend is in Tri Valley yes and uh, uh and uh, right now, like, he applied to some other universities as well, but, uh, you know, what happened, I mean, they gave the acceptance letter. Yes. And, uh... But the service cannot be transferred, right? Yeah, but the service is not getting transferred, you know? Yeah, it's not going to be able to be transferred unless it gets released, because service is transferred only from the original school to the other school. So this is what happened. Just before I came to the studio, I found out that the ICE gave a, a hotline, a 415 number. You can check on my website on uh, com. I posted it. And also I think on... Yeah, the, but you said not to call that number. Yes, right? yes. I, mean, I uh, said don't call that number because let what I'm going to do, first thing uh, on Monday, I'm going to have my, uh, the attorneys in the office call that number and figure out exactly. Let me tell you some few uh, situations that is happening um, people who are going there volunteering information some of them are getting placed into custody some of them are going into ISAP which is a, a, a program where you, you kind of get bonded but ultimately what they are telling those people they are not telling them they are putting them in deportation they are just telling them we are going to go in front of a judge but the truth is that going in front of a judge is a removal proceeding that means they are putting those people in, uh, people in deportation so I don't want them just to take advantage, take all the information from you and then use that same information and then help people. Well, they're not helping uh, quote unquote, but that's their job, right? And one of the rules that we know as lawyers is that the government has a right to lie to you, but you cannot lie to them. So having an attorney, so what we're going to do, we're going to call those... Um, the, uh, the member on Monday and see what they tell us and one by one we should be able to bring our clients there and check with them and if people cannot afford an attorney I just heard also another news that the Indian consulate is trying to put a panel of free lawyers to help those uh, most people uh, I'm hoping that they will put that together very very soon and I think we have Manet on the line so um, just keep in touch with us. Uh, well, our number at the office is 510-742-5887. Right now, uh, I, I will not, if you, even if you call that number, please don't give any information. Uh, except maybe give your service number, but if you start giving details, then if they think that you violated something, even you think it's innocent, they can use it against you. Okay? Okay, uh, do you have Marlet on, on line right now? 
Hello, hi Monet. Hi, hi, hi Shah, it's Monet. Oh, hi Monet, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, and thank you very much for staying late and being on our show today. It's a very important topic, and I know your time is valuable, and I really appreciate you being here today. Sure, no problem. Okay, well, I think you uh, pretty much a lot of people know you now, especially in the Indian community, because it seems like your article went all around the world. And um, uh, congratulations on that article. You pretty much one, was one of the first person to break the news, right? Yeah, we were actually. Um, the way it happened is um, one of my freelance writers, the, uh, my contributor, actually realized that there was a raid going on at a Ruby Hill home here in Pleasanton, California. Mm -hmm. And so she's a writer for Pleasanton.patch.com. Yes. And what happened was she noticed that there was some kind of raid going on and she called me right away and said, you know, this is going on and let's write about it. And so, you know, she approached the federal agents and just asked them what's going on. They wouldn't really say what they were looking for or why they were there. But um, they said, you know, this is kind of part of uh, an investigation. And so we wrote about it. It was just a quick blurb. And we didn't realize until later that this was kind of a really big deal um, and that it was connected to Tri Valley University until later on, until we found out um, who was the owner of that home and that it was connected to the Tri Valley University. Wow. That's, uh, that's an amazing story. Sometimes it, 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 small things happen to be big right <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, um, since you I have you online right now um, we will have hopefully I'll have some also some people are going to testify uh, what has happened to them and just to uh, let you know uh, if we have um, we will be taking callers in the middle so before I take more callers I wanted to ask you also are, uh, are you following with more updates on the story or s some of your writers uh, what's going on on your side Sure. Um, so every day we're kind of calling ICE um, and also the U.S. Attorney's Office who is in charge of kind of, you know, um, they're the ones who are going to the court system and, um, you know, we're really watching them closely basically because they, they are the ones who are going to either be filing charges or, or things like that. But from as, as this point, um, it, we know that it is just a civil lawsuit um, against the Tri-Valley University and the owners of that establishment. It is not um, any criminal charges or anything like that. Um, and, and that's something that I know as of today because I called the U.S. Attorney's Office. Um, so at this point, there's, there's not really anything new in terms of... Um, uh, you know, in terms of the the law part of it, <laughs> mm. um, it, it's just it, it's basically still kind of remaining the same in terms of what they're looking for. From what I understand, there is a, an investigation going on, and there is um, a civil case against um, basically these these properties and the owner of those properties. Well, you know, this is the thing um, right now. Um Mana, that's kind of a little bit disturbing for me because I was in law school when September 11 happened and the aftermath after that is um, many people were rounded up and arrested and many of them probably were linked to something but some of m m most of them were not um, guilty of charge and um, and also we had the situation of what we call a special registration and let me tell you what has happened from my knowledge uh, they will be asking people to call a number or to show up for a special registration. And guess what? People were, as soon as you show up there, they were placed in deportation. And from the experience I'm getting from most of my clients, the few clients that was placed into deportation or were being charged were those who went there with good faith and volunteered information. So um, at this point, I think it's, uh, we have to kind of look into that angle. And do you have any kind, of, uh, any kind of testimony or any of your readers have called you and said, uh, you know, Mona, this is what happened to me, uh, something like that? Sure. Um, actually, I've received probably, I, I can't even say, something like hundreds of, of emails and I actually received calls as well from people all over the country and 
you know, um, I have heard word of people um, getting questioned by federal agents. I have heard word of people just feeling very, um, very sad and just unsure of, of their situation as well as being, feeling, feeling like they're in limbo. You know what I mean? Um, they're, they just don't know what to do next. They don't know where to go, who to ask questions. And I was trying to, you know, really work hard to... Um, try to find resources for everyone, but I know that whenever, you know, I call specific agencies and they find out that I'm a reporter, um, a lot of times they, they don't really, um, they don't really have anything to say at this point because the investigation is still going on, and, and that's totally understandable since I think at this point they're trying to gather evidence and, and um, yes, I Going on. Yeah, I think I think that's that's what's happening. Uh, well, um, but the, the 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 issue is kind of a little bit different. The the whole the whole dynamic was uh, if Tri Valley University uh, is uh, is the one that they they were after. It seems like um, going after the the students, which I understand is from part of the ICE job, it seems kind of bit early at this point um let me quickly tell you a little bit about the law how it works by them shutting down the university and taking the service from those students they become technically out of status and um when they become out of status they cannot change to another status sometimes unless there's that grace period which is being mentioned by the eyes and they didn't have a contingency plan when they went in and shut it down so where I'm getting a little bit confused with the government is, well, I'm a lawyer, so I'm always on, uh, on some sides. So, uh, what I'm a little bit confused is um, the fact that the information that is being given to the student, for example, one student call and they say, you know what, the school shut down, you're out of status, we'll give you 15 days to change. Another student call and they say, you know what, we, you don't have any status, we are going to, to place you in deportation. Another one today, they raided the, her at and she was she was someone very uh, of high most of the students by the way are really are high caliber they are all mm -hmm. uh, masters phds and things like that and what has happened is um one of them today uh, she works actually for for a big uh, hospital and then they told her you know uh the school has not been shut down uh we are just trying to investigate at this point and if you check uh, the website of uh, ice uh, or the service uh, um, website tri valley is still on there so mm -hmm. it's kind of a either the information has not been disseminated properly or there's something going on which is not very clear and those poor students don't have any guidance at this point and and I'm hoping that everybody will step up and say, you know what, hold on a second. We, of course, if there was fraud, we are the first one who's going to denounce it. But what happened to those innocent students? So I don't know what the point of view of the, of, of the paper, but uh, it seems like there, there is a battle right there or who's innocent and who's guilty, right? I think, I think there's definitely a lot of confusion and just a lot of just information not being out there. Um, even from my end, I'm trying to get information, and it's just it's just not available. Yeah, this is what has happened since a lot, uh, last night. I don't know if you know, the ICE has established a phone number hotline. Uh, I just got it. I posted it on my website, actually. And also, the, the Indian consulate just issued a press release tonight. So everybody decided to release everything Friday night. <laughs> so <laughs> the, all the stuff we've been waiting are, are coming now at night. But good, give us time to disseminate. I think we have one caller. Let me take the caller, okay? Hold on. Don't go anywhere. I want it, okay? Okay. Okay. Hello, this is Shapirali. I think I lost her. This is Shapirali. You're alive in here? Uh, hi, Sha. Hi, how are you? Hello? Hello? Uh, hi, Sha. Yes, uh, I'm here to talk to you about the Tri Valley University issue. Yes. Uh, well, uh, uh, two things that I would like to talk to, uh, talk to you about are about the Consulate Journal of India, San Francisco report about Tri Valley University. Yes. Uh, I hope you might have. Hello, I lost you. <laughs> I think I lost the caller. Um, so, um, I'm going to the monitor. Are you still online? 
I think we lost Mohamed too. You might want to. I'm here. Oh, you're yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I think I lost the caller, and uh, he was testifying about something with the uh, with the um, Indian consulate. From what I heard from inside, from some of my lawyer friends. Okay, let me. I think the caller is calling back. Hello, hello, hello. This is Shapiro. Are you alive in here? Hello. Yes. Well, um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm here to talk to you about the Taiwan University issue. Yes, uh, two things that I'd like to focus on is the uh, Consulate General of India San Francisco report that was released today. Yes. Uh, there are there are a few points in the Consulate General of India report which are a bit confusing. I would like you to. Uh, Oh, I think I think I, I I lost the call. I'm sorry. You can call again, okay? Manoj, you're still here. Yes, I am. Okay. Just I think the caller is calling back. I think we are having some technical issues. Go ahead. Hello, caller. Hello, Sonny. So I try too many times. Anyway, you are busy and talk about the university. But I have a different question. Can I talk? All uh, right now. Uh, can you call me? Like uh, we will be down. Uh, we will be here for two hours. So if you want to okay. call me a little bit later, I I will take your question. But right now, I just want to talk about the university because most of the people are calling for that. Uh, but no. I will be here till one in the morning. Uh, so you can call me after twelve. I will take that. Okay. So Manoj, you're still there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. By the way, yeah. There's a press release from the. I'm looking at the press release right now from the San Francisco, uh, the Indian consulate in San Francisco. Um, I don't know if you have a chance to have a computer in front of you, but I don't know what the caller was saying. There are two two things which are confusing. Um, I didn't have. I I'm just browsing through it right now because I'm on the air, so I don't want to give any any opinion on it until I read it completely. But. Um, the truth is, uh, from what I've heard inside, uh, from my friends who are attorneys, they have been contacted by the consulate that where they will be, they will be going. Uh, they are trying to put a panel of lawyers to uh, ha uh, to help those students on a pro bono basis, and that uh, that for that I upload them. But the main thing I'm thinking is that the consulate should intervene at a higher level. Um, what do you think? You know, um, it's it's hard to say at this point because um, it, I know that there are people who are calling to kind of take charge, and um, I, I have heard of different kind of efforts. Um, I know that there. I think in India also there was a, a protest. Did you hear about that? There was um, oh, no. kind of a call. I read somewhere that there was a call uh, to the U.S. consulate that was based over there, I believe, and um, this is something that I read today, that okay. they were calling for, for some kind of proactive action, making sure that students know their rights and kind of, um, you know, kind of, kind of taking more of a proactive uh, approach to this. Well, that's, that's so, good. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. This is good. But... Um, yeah, this is exactly because I was interviewed by Times Now, which is kind of the CNN there. And uh, the first question when they asked me, uh, the s first thing I said, uh, "Hey, you, you know, uh, you should be." Um, I think the government of India, uh, of India need to intervene at this point because most of the the students from that school are from India. But uh, from my experience right now, Manet, is that this is where it, it, I am kind of very, very. Uh, uh, a little bit upset about it is most of the people I talk to when I sat down with them they genuinely believe they were not doing anything wrong um, they were the school represented to them that they could take virtual classes that was a word being used to them virtual classes which we know according to the law they cannot take online classes but it was represented as virtual classes so they thought well it's just like going to a doctor and the doctor says, you think you have cancer, but the doctor says, no, you're fine, you just have an infection. You probably believe the doctor, right? So this is where I, I'm, I'm a little bit um, kind of, um, I'm not very happy of the fact that the way the ICE is handling the situation because they are kind of turning the whole blame now on the students and the school is being set on the side. It's pretty much, we don't hear about tri Valley University per se, we're just hearing about the students, right? Yeah, cool. yeah, cool. it, for, from our part, for Pleasanton.patch.com, um, we kind of focused just on the investigation, but I'm not sure, um, you know, I, I think 
there have been, in terms of forums and things like that, people talking about the students. Um, but for our focus, we're really trying to focus on um, the university itself and, and just the investigation part of it. Yeah, and so. I think we should, we should continue on that because definitely one thing I'm looking at is, is something called a U-Visa. I don't know if you heard about a U-Visa. It is for people who are victims of, uh, of a crime and that allows them to stay in the United States. But I'm, f I'm trying to meet all the elements on that for my clients. Uh, but so far, uh, it's still it's at the initial stage, so we cannot help them. And during the meantime, uh, I'm just worried that they will just be rounded up and deported in, uh, in a m kind of a mass deportation or something like that. And that's the unfortunate situation. And they are not left with many options. So on your s uh, would you mind, uh, I will call on, on, on your, on your paper, uh, Pleasant and Patch, uh, to at least have one article maybe on the student side. Oh, definitely. That's kind of, um, I've been trying to actually get in contact with students. A lot of them, of course, um, are uncomfortable with kind of fully put you know, putting on paper kind of their names and things like that. Um, I think a lot of people are scared. So, but if it's definitely, I, I was kind of reaching out to people, um, especially in the Bay Area, if there is a student who has been impacted by this and would be willing to talk and put their name out there, um, I would be more than happy to talk to them. I'm actually, I was hoping to, to find someone who I can talk to and just see, you know, how this has been impacting their lives and um, well, what they've got. Well, here we go. You can make your announcement, and if you want to give a, a phone number or, or an email, they can reach you. Uh, uh, yes. Go ahead and do that. Yeah, um, please, um, if you're a Bay Area um, who is very resident, who is a student of Tri-Valley University or was or was planning on it, please give me a call. My phone number is 925-209-9182. That's 925-209-9182. Or you can um, find my email at pleasanton.patch.com. That's pleasanton.patch.com. And I would love to speak with, with any um, anyone who's been impacted by this. Um, I'm really trying to kind of uh, look for for people who have have something to say about this. So. Well, that's great. That's good. You're doing an excellent job, and I think uh, uh, should be a lot of praise because you. I pretty much learn about the real um, the beginning of the story from from present and past, and that's why I've been I wanted to have you on the air. So, Manet, I'm going to just say thank you to you. Uh, I'll have another guest coming, but uh, if you have any other announcement, I want you to to let our st uh, the students know where. Uh, uh, the website again is pleasantandpatch.com and yes. uh, yeah. I, I've been posting stuff myself there too because uh, um, many people were just giving uh, one one thing I wanted to let everybody know please don't don't take advice from non-lawyers because it's going to come back and hurt you <laughs> some people are just thinking well they're trying to do their best to help but sometimes they give advice that can hurt someone and and um, even sometimes lawyers, uh, we make mistakes, so, but, at the, but this is our job. We are supposed to make sure that uh, we protect the interests of people. So uh, make, sure, right. make sure that uh, people don't do that. But thank you very much, Maya. It was a pleasure, and thank you for staying so late for us. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Okay. Have bye -bye. a good night. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Uh, I think we have uh, uh, Kavitas on there. Oh, Hello. 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 This is Sharp Rally. Uh, hi, Shop. Hi. Uh, well, uh, I'm trying to get, get in touch with you for a while. Oh, well, yes, yes. Um, well, I'm a student at Primary University. Um, I was served an NTA. Uh, my, the charge on my NTA is that I've attended more than three periods of uh, online course. Uh, that is, uh, courses outside uh, the classroom. That's mm -hmm. the charge on my NTA. Uh, yeah. on my NTA. And uh, and there are a lot of developments going on for the last few weeks, uh, uh, last uh, few days, sorry. Yeah. And uh, I'll, uh, there, I would like to highlight a few things. One is uh, there's a lot of inconsistency in the way uh, students are handled across the country. Uh, some of them are given an option to transfer to a different university. Some of them uh, are uh, taken into custody. Some of them. Hello. I think I lost, uh, we lost you. So uh, can you just call back again, Cora? This is very interesting. You're giving a, an excellent testimony here. I'm sorry, we're having some technical issues with our phone line, but please call back. Or um, you can also, yeah, please call us back. one eight five five seven eight zero eight eight. 
772-8278. I think we have someone else. Uh, and okay, I think I have Kavita Aurora on, on the air. Uh, Kavita, are you there? Yes, I am, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, Kavita. And thank you for staying so late and, and calling you uh, uh, from... Um, uh, calling you so, calling us so late and staying awake, and uh, I, I don't know if you have been listening to the show. It's been kind of a little bit. Uh, we have gotten a few testimonials, and just to introduce Kavita, Kavita Aurora is a correspondent for uh, is uh, from Sitare TV, uh, where which uh, the air in the in on the channel 28 in the East uh, East Bay, right? Or and you have different channels, yes. right? And yes, so it's channel 29, 28, and 15 in the East Bay, and in San Jose and Calgary is channel 15. Okay, great. Uh, well, uh, Kavita, thank you for being here. And also, you are also a correspondent for um, uh, Times Now, uh, w which is excellent. And I think you're also a correspondent for a few other, other major networks. And I'm, I'm very, very proud to have you on the air with me today. And today we're going to change yeah. a little bit the side. I am going to question you. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. So, Kavita, uh, you have been following uh, uh, with those stories. And um, I, I, you, you did a piece for uh, times now, like I, as, as I mentioned, and I think just like I don't know if you listened earlier, there was Monet on the line from Pleasant and Patch, and yes, she, yes. Also, she also wants to know what uh, what can we do. Uh, she would be glad to talk to any of the students, and actually we had one student on the air with us right now, and I think we lost him unfortunately. Where uh, basically what he was saying is that it's, there is a double standard that is going on. Um, some people are not getting uh, uh, are not getting in, in trouble, and uh, some people are getting in trouble. But just to correct that, is uh, there is a double standard, but there is also the fact that many people that I know who are kind of getting into trouble right now are people who have kind of volunteered information also, where they went in and say, you know what, I didn't do anything wrong. I will tell you what I did. And guess what? As soon as you say that, it can come back and hurt you. And um, I know you, you have some, you have a low background, Karit, and you know the rule, right? So tell yes. me a little bit what you have learned on your side and what you can share with our listeners tonight. Well, one of the important things is no one should be talking to any, um, to any authority right now. They should actually be consulting an attorney. And because, you know, they all know that anything can be used against them. Yes. Uh, even, even a mere um, innocent admission. Yes. So it's very important to, to have someone behind you that can speak for you. Yes. Or, or to not speak. Yeah. You, know, you have the right to remain silent, and, and this is your time to exercise that. And the other thing is that it's very important if you're a Tri Valley student to come together and talk to the media at this time because you need to gather support with the media. And the media, the journalists have a privilege that they're not supposed to talk about, um, that they cannot talk to the government about this. So there's a um, media journalist privilege. Um, so it's very important for the students out there. I know there's a lot of students in hiding right now. They're not disclosing where they're staying. They're not disclosing where um, their names or their identity. And I would like to meet all those students or any of them uh, for an interview for Times Now. We are still very interested and meeting all the students. So if you've been impacted by the closure, I know your parents have spent a lot of money to send you out to school over here. So if you've been impacted, you can send me an email at info at safari.com. It's S-I-T-A-A-R-E. And I'm going to stress this over and over again throughout this weekend is I'm trying to reach any student, at least one student out there. And we will, disclose, we will not disclose their identity. We will cover their identity. We will, co we will not disclose their name, their identity, or their location. Well, this is if you're out there, I want to reach you. Exactly. And also, um, knowing Kavita personally, I know she's a genuine journalist. And uh, if that makes people feel comfortable and still wants to, to be kind of be a, someone who wants to be the first one, basically, or few ones who wants to testify and, and stand now saying, hey, 
uh, we didn't do anything wrong, we will be glad to even sit with you during that, that interview where we can protect your, your, your interests and at least you feel safe. Um, uh, we will be glad to do that because we really think that this is an amazing uh, situation right now. The reason that I took this case at heart, Kavita, is uh, many people um, don't know how it works with me. I am very much an activist. That's, that's what I kind of always done in my life. I'm also, I run a law firm, but at least um, I know by helping people, uh, I, get, I get it back. And I think I took that at heart because the techniques that are being used looks very similar to the back in the days post-September 11, when um, the government will be asking people to go for a special registration. And guess what? When they will go for a special registration, uh, many of them will be locked up or deported. And that's what's kind of the unfortunate situations uh, that, that many of the students are facing. And I think uh, talking to the media is very important. And tell me some few updates, Kavita. It seems like there will be a press conference with the Indian Consulate, something like that, happening soon? Well, it's not a press conference. Um, I will be meeting with a couple of members from the Indian Consulate. Students have actually met the Indian Consulate. They have, been, they have met uh, Shushmita um, Thomas. So there are students, there are some meeting, meetings going on. I'm not aware of them. I have not been part of them. I'm aware of them, but I have not been part of them. And I will be meeting a couple of members from the consulate tomorrow and the after tomorrow. I don't know who exactly, but there will be a couple of folks from there. Well, I we're trying to get support. That's what we're trying to do for the students. Exactly, and and I think this is the whole idea. It's not about a matter of of uh, in, uh, the uh, you, uh, Indian embassy will just be. Uh, doing, um, getting a group of lawyers to help you. The whole idea is also to bring the, the, the message to the Indian government that they don't n only need help in terms of legal representation, that a lot of people are doing, I'm doing it and other lawyers are doing it. What we need is basically a high level talk with when the US, uh, Indian government will uh, approach the in, um, US government and say, hey, hold on a second, these are dissident, we have been sending students. Most of, most of those people are not not hardcore criminals that you just can yes. run them up and put them in, in custody. And this is where I am, I am I'm pushing for that and you know I'm, I'm, when you, when you interview me uh, for Times Magazine, the, um, Times Now, I, uh, the first thing I emphasize is that the Indian government should get involved. And um, I don't know if you are aware also Kavita, I just heard from Mana that there was a protest in India. Are you aware of that? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of unrest in in India right now because it's, it's become a major issue in India. Really, and that's why Times Now is really after this. They're they're giving you know up to date, and they want me to bring up to date information from the Bay Area to them. Exactly. So, well, this is a chance, uh, uh, guys. Uh, hear that call. Uh, you can call my office if you don't want. Uh, you are not able to reach Kavita directly. You can call my office on five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven and just let us know. You can talk to Anu or, or check my website, Shah. Pirali.com and tell us hey, we're, going to, we're willing now to talk to the press because what's happening is that by them trying to hide it's, it's, it's not helping actually at this point I, I'm not the, the person that will call people to go to the press um, the reason I'm saying that is that if we can gather a good momentum we should be able to turn the tables on this because right now the whole investigation is done in secret and everything is being done really um, uh, the old-fashioned way, but if we bring that, the light to the newspapers, and uh, it's already there, but if we get the, the support of more and more of the students, it will make a difference. Hello, you're yes, there? Ab yes, absolutely, Isha. We do need the support of everybody involved in this case. The yes. government, the consulate, and, the and students, exactly. media, everybody. And I will the public. Yeah, the public. And that's another thing I make a call to all the in, uh, Indians out there, or even non-Indians. Uh, like, you, as you know, I'm not an Indian per se, even I am from Indian origin, but I feel for those people. I know what they go through in this country. And I, I hear so many people saying, oh, you know, they should have known better. How did they know better? Uh, exactly. This is the whole question. They keep saying, oh, they should have known this is not... Like I said, my example is that if you go to a doctor, you think you're a little bit sick, you go to a doctor, the doctor says, you're fine, don't worry about it. And later you die of can cancer, you cannot blame that, 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 um, that patient for not knowing, right? 
Yes, exactly, Shad. There's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the blogs out there saying the students should have been aware, they should have done research, the master's students, PhD students, but they won't be aware because the students, I mean, in Pleasanton, if the, if the school, if the government is giving the school an authority to, to educate folks out there and to collect tuition to have the visas, then students are going to look at that at face value and say that's a legitimate university. Well, this is this is this is the uh, the whole thing. This is where we have to kind of shed some lights into that. And I, I also say to many people, they say, "Well, the Indians come here and everything." But guess what? Uh, we will not have the Silicon Valley without Indians. That would be kind of <laughs> that's going to be a funny one uh, if we lose all the Indians here. But what we need is a support. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I'd like to stress again that you know it's very important to help students, and I'm there as media to help them. And if they want to check. My profile, they can go on YouTube, www.youtube.com slash user slash S-I-T-A-A-R-E-1. Yes. And they can see that I have clips on there. I am a journalist because a lot of the students that I've been talking to, they've been questioning my identity. They want to know, are you somebody from, you're an attorney, they can go on your website and they can check that out. Yes. For me also, they can check out that I am a journalist. I am not somebody that's, you know, I'm not, from the INS or anything. I am a journalist. They can call me at 510-304-8654. And I'll repeat that number many times. 510-304-8654. I'd like to meet one of you this weekend. We will not disclose your name, your identity, or your location. We can put a sheet between you and the camera. We can film you from the behind, from the back of your head. So we're not disclosing, but you know, in order for you to get support, people need to know that you're out there and that you're hurting. People need to know that you're out there, you've paid tuition, you're a legitimate student, your parents have spent their hard-earned money to send you to America to get an education, you came on as F1 visa and now the university is closed and you might lose your status. Exactly. In order to help you, we can't do that unless you come forward. Exactly, exactly. And um, I will not, we will try, we will do everything possible to protect our uh, Okay, I, we have one caller, Kavita. Hold on, don't go anywhere. Okay? Oh. Hello, this is Shapiro. Are you alive on air? Hello? Uh -huh. Hello, this is Shapiro. Are you alive on air? Hello? Hello, sir. Are you alive on air? Hi. Hi, uh, how are you? Well, uh, I got cut off for you. Yes, yes, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, we were listening to you. Can you just go ahead? Kavita, are you still there too? Hello? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm calling from the East Coast, like... Yeah, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh-oh, I think we lost we lost the caller again. Kavita, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, okay. I think that caller has been trying to reach us. His story is very, very, very interesting, uh, Kavita, honestly, because he said few words, and he was one of those who were, who were taken in for... He was not doing anything. He was just going to school normal. He was not even working on the thing that they call CPT. And he was placed, basically, now he already have an NTA, which is a notice to appear in front of a judge. And he's really upset because it seems like he's saying that, why me? Why others are is not happening? So there's a double standard. But uh, it's not really why me. It's basically they, they're picking the easy fruits right now, right? Yeah, whoever they can find. Exactly. So this is where it, it is very important. Hiding is one thing. Uh, there was no support a few days ago. Now it seems like everybody's getting together. And I think even the Indian consulate is getting into that. But the thing is that they posted a phone number, uh, Kavita. They posted a phone number right now, and it was posted uh, by this newspaper, Herald, Deccan Herald. I don't know them, but it seems like they are an Indian newspaper. They said to call ICE and to give you information. I highly recommend you don't do that. Any of you, don't give your information just uh, because you think it's going to help your case, uh, unless you have an attorney present with you. Unless you have an attorney present with you, don't do that. And Kavita, also, tell me what are the next steps and uh, what are we expecting? Do you have any kind of insight what might be happening right now with the Indian government or in India? It seems that the protests are growing against the U.S. consulate for the treatment of the Indian students, right? Yes, well, that is, you know, that is a solid thing. Parents are going to be, you know, outraged, absolutely, because they have spent their hard-earned money. 
you know, and if you look at Andhra Pradesh, Telugu community, it's a very highly educated community. Uh, it's known as a very honest community. We're really interested in education. And a lot of these students have two to three master's degrees and they're going for their PhD. Um, and, and many of them, I mean, there's allegations that they're working in low wage, that they're working across the country. And, and if, you, if you look at students, I'm not sanctioning anything, whether that's good or bad, but, and I'm not authorized to speak on their behalf of the government, but if they're hiding out there for those reasons, they should not be hiding. This is the time that if they came, they came out here to be students, they should come out and speak to the media. So that's the most important thing right now. I mean, in India, you are going to get that protest, and that's a very good thing. We need any kind of pressure that we can get for, for the government here to, to react in a positive way. Well, I agree with you. Know, we did have, but the other hand, we did have 9-11. So there is this, this fear, which is legitimate. Well, definitely, this is this is one thing that got me really involved into that is because I I, I kind of foresee the same kind of approach like I was like was done on 9/11. Uh, not maybe to that bigger extent, but the approach is pretty much the same because the training is the same. And let me tell you a few few things that has been happening. Um, I got a call today where. Uh, a person uh, basically who was a very educated person they came to her and said you know what it seems you didn't do anything wrong so go ahead just get another school you'll be fine but you have to explain that to a judge so that person called me for a consultation she said it seems like everything went fine they talk to me they say everything is fine you just have to explain it to a judge but what don't people don't understand when they say explain to a judge that means you're in removal proceeding, you're in deportation at this point. They're putting you in deportation. Go and explain it. They didn't make any judgment. So this is the approach that they're saying. They, they basically themselves are admitting that you didn't do anything wrong, but we're still going to put you in deportation because we feel like we will do it. And the worst part of it, the way it was done, that person was taken in a car and brought somewhere, from what she's telling me, and then for four hours was interrogated. And that's not America. Hold on a second, Kavita, don't go anywhere. We have an, another caller. This is Shapi Ali, you're live on air. Hello? Hello? Hello, this is Shapi Ali, you're live on air. Hey, Shah, this is Praveen. Oh, Praveen, how are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm not a student. Uh, yes. I'm a local businessman. I own a restaurant called Biryani Boat. Oh, how are you? We know Biryani Boat. Right? Uh, uh, hello, hello uh, Kavita. How are you? Hello, Kavita. Can you hear us? Oh, she's, a, she's on hold. Hello? Hello. Yes, Kavita. Can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you. Uh, you need to hear uh, Praveen? Is Praveen there? Uh, we lost Praveen. Praveen, if you are you're still listening, please give me a call back. We start having, you know, this is a problem when we do two, two, three callers at the same time. And I think you know, you know Praveen too, right, Kavita? Hello. Uh, what, this, what is your last name? Uh, he's a uh, owner know. of Briani Boy. If you're not, if you're not talking about last names, I wouldn't know Praveen. <laughs> but uh, he didn't say his last name. But he's the owner of Briani Ball, so. Oh yes, okay. Yeah, she, he was saying hi to us, and uh, I think we lost it. We're having some issues with the with the phone line because whenever we take two callers at the same time, it seems like one cuts off the other. I apologize for that. Uh, the number to call again, Pavin called me on one eight five five seven seven two eight two seven eight, and uh, we have another caller. Yeah, let me take that, Kavita. Hello, hello, hello. You're live on air. Yeah, hi, Shah. Hi, Pavin. Hey, first of all, uh, I appreciate your effort and time and money you're putting in oh, to you. help our community. Well, we are, we are always, we are always... And uh, uh, honestly, I was listening to Kavita. Yes, Kavita has said exactly right. These people, uh, I won't say the names, I met about 10 students from Firewall College. Yes. And I've been telling them... Oh, I don't know what, what's happening. We keep losing the, the, the thing up. Uh, um, Pavin, call me back, please. One eight five five seven seven two eight two seven eight. One line is pretty much overlapping on the other. Kavita, you still there? I'm still here. Yeah, I think that's the problem. That's the technical. You issue. want me to get off the line so you can talk to Pavin? Um, yeah, that would be good. I'll call you right back, Kavita. Don't go anywhere. No so worries. So keep listening. Back. Thank you, thank you, Kavita. Okay, yeah. let us. So Pavin, just call us back on one eight five five seven seven two eight two seven eight. 
1-855-772-8278. And Pravid, we need support like, like you uh, on, on this because if other business owners, doctors, because I've got a, a call also, I think he's, he's back online. Hello? Hey, yes. Sean. Yes, Pravin. Sorry. Now, yeah, now thanks that uh, you arranged uh, to convey my message. Yes. So, this is exactly what I've been telling. And most, uh, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, most of the students, about 80% of the students belong to my, my state, Andhra Pradesh. You know, yes. first of all, I'm proud of uh, how intelligent they are, how hardworking they are. Yes, me too. I'm and proud. unfortunately, uh, to be honest, as I said, I won't mention the names. Yes. I bumped into a couple of guys. They are acting like they are guilty. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry to say to all those students, they are really acting like they are guilty. Yes. We should not do that anymore. As, you, as Kavita said, people have to come out and speak out their views. Yes, exactly. And honestly, if INS or somebody wants to catch hold of them, whoever are people are not coming in the front and trying to hide away from, you know, moving to places, it's not a big deal if the INS decides to catch hold of each person. Yeah, I agree with you. This is a and, very, very and my people or our people are not made for such things. So just temporarily they are getting scared. They should speak out. And first of all, I have an appeal for all the students who can come forward and give a message to uh, 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 through Kavitas uh, like the you know Times Now and stuff like that. For us, make sure your parents back home are conveyed a message from you guys that you are are doing fine. This is just a procedure because the college has cheated them. So first of all, I want them to think that they are not guilty. Yes. And they, it's fine, you can hide, but you know, you, you don't have to present your face on the screen, as Kavita said. They should convey a message to their parents back home, on behalf of them, on behalf of every student, that whatever has been uh, crafted on the TV, certain TVs, is not true. This is a procedure from the Homeland Security because of, because of the investigation. Yes. So that way the parents can breathe in and live happily yes. there. Well, I am I am broadcasting also on the internet. I will put it on YouTube and I make a call to all the parents. Uh, we will try our best and I right. think I'm taking this thing really personally at heart because for two reasons. One, I belong to the Muslim community and I know what has happened after September 11. I'm having the same feeling going on right now. And two, because to be honest with you, my ancestors probably comes from the same, uh, from AP. And uh, it's kind of a dual thing that's happening to me right now. And I am I am very very sad um, because I, I just to tell you Pravin in the first past five days I spoke to almost 300 of those students they've been calling my office I've been working almost 15 hours a day just dealing with those cases and I didn't I could only tell some people the only thing uh, a big advice I'm saying don't talk to immigration without an attorney however you talk to a lawyer we put groups together we can have a force and we will be able to, to, to make changes. And I make another call to the Indian community. For those who believe, and I don't want, I want to call on those people who already believe those students are guilty because they, they already kind of in their mind, they're already prejudiced. For those who have an open mind, know that many of those students are not guilty. Give a call to the Indian consulate and give a call to the Senate. If we may put enough pressure on the U.S. government and the Indian government, guess what? They can solve this. I'm telling you, they can solve it at a higher level, and immigration will have to come up with something that is fair. They cannot just be deporting 2,000 students. That doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah, the, the way they're trying to hide out, that is building up unnecessary pressure on their own community and the students' uh, group. No, but uh, you, understand, you have to understand that, Pravin. This is new. There was no directives in the past four days. It was there is always this this time period where everybody just hide, because I know when after September everybody that I knew would be hiding. But after that, the voice is starting to 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 clear, and then the dust is starting to settle a little bit. We need to. What we need, we need people to get involved, like professionals, because there are many professionals in this community, right? Most of them are IT engineers, doctors, lawyers. We get together, we work together, I'm inviting them to call my office, we can put something and like you're a professional brother, and I think it's a good idea. Okay, I, we're going to take a station break, stay on the line probably, we're going to continue talking to you or you can, or you can call me back. Still doing your own taxes? Go to Revy Tax Services. They have been helping people in filing personal and business taxes for over 10 years, 10 to 20% off before March 15th. We also have additional services like bookkeeping, payroll and insurance. For more information, go online to www www.revitax.com That's R-A-V-I-Tax.com 
4087229386. Do you suffer from bleeding gums? Are you experiencing pain in your teeth at this very moment? Don't suffer any longer. Cosmetic dentist Dr. Sunday with California Shine Dental is here to help you. He offers the latest in dental technology at his state-of-the-art dental office. His professional and caring